Hey everybody, this is Quick Pivot, and we're here to talk about acronym overload. Um, you've probably heard them CRM, DMP, CDP, MAP, BI, AI. They're everywhere as marketing stacks get more and more complicated, and we want to unravel at least a couple of the big ones um, and compare CDPs to CRM systems and DMPs. And we are your hosts. This is Paul Mandeville talking. I'm the Chief Product Officer of Quick Pivot. And we've got an opinion in this space, but I'm also joined by a colleague of mine. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Laura Tentis, and I'm a senior solutions consultant here at Quick Pivot. Uh, essentially, I get the pleasure of doing software demos and CDP interactions with our prospects and clients. I'm going to send it back to Paul so he can say a couple words about Quick Pivot before we get started. Yep. So what we're going to cover today is a little bit of our street credibility on this topic. Why do we even have an opinion uh, on the CDP space? And in comparison to other technologies, we're going to go over the CDP definition. We're going to compare CDPs to CRM systems and then compare CDPs further to DMPs. And then we're going to take a look at how CDPs plug into your marketing stack and then give you some details on how you might get back in touch with us. And you should think of this as a no strings attached offer. We're always happy to meet new people and talk about the industry and technology at large. So a few words about Quick Pivot. So we are a software company, we are a customer data platform, but we are also a fully integrated marketing suite. And we've been in the business of both marketing data and marketing technology for a long time. We've got about 75 clients, 20 partners, they come in all shapes and sizes. Some of the logos reflected here are obviously names you might recognize. We've also been in the data business for a really long time. So Quick Pivot has its roots in the marketing services industry all the way back to 1994. And that's way before the acronym CDP even existed. In fact, it's before a lot of marketing technology even existed. And it goes back to the days when we used to build bespoke marketing databases from scratch using traditional database technology. And we've learned a ton about data by doing it the old fashioned way, but obviously we've been proponents of technology through the years. And about five years ago, we made the jump to build our own platform, the Quick Pivot Marketing Suite. And that platform is one part CDP, and it's one part multi-channel marketing suite, and it drives billions of interactions and one-to-one -one touches each year for some of the biggest brands that you might recognize. But I'll also emphasize that it works well for small brands as well, because whether you're a big brand or a small brand, you're chasing the usage of data to create a meaningful customer experience. It's important to note that our platform specifically supports both online and offline customer journeys, and we're strong advocates of the Customer Data Platform Institute, which you can read all about in the links that follow at the end of the slides. And now before we get into to sort of what our definition is of a CDP, we really wanted to talk through some of the other definitions that are available from some of the biggest thought leaders in this space, including, as Paul mentioned, the CDP Institute. Um, there, you know, it's a customer data platform. It's a marketer managed system that creates a persistent unified customer database that's accessible to other systems. The second definition coming from another obviously huge player in this space, um, where it's a marketing system that unifies a company's customer data from marketing and other channels to enable customer modeling and optimization. Paul, I know that we have some we also have our definition and some thoughts on this. Yeah, we like to put our own terms to things. Um, we're not huge fans of buzzword bingo. So in our words, a CDP is a marketing-owned database that collects and presents all customer data. And it's constantly evolving automatically as new data becomes available so that the stakeholders learn to trust that data as being the source of truth about their customers and their customers' interactions with the brand so that they can stop worrying and wrangling with data and data ir irregularities and they can start putting that data to work to create amazing customer experiences. So that is our layman's definition. It's a bit wordy, um, but we think that it works when we describe that in our approach uh, to our customers. So the first question to ask is why even consider a CDP in the first place? So given the definition of a CDP as generally being the place of truth, there are some byproducts that have tangible business benefits. So the first one is simply better targeting, and that's across all channels. And better targeting leads to increased conversion rates and increased acquisition rates. 
The second benefit is a improved operational efficiency. So time is money. Uh, it always has been. It always will be. Uh, we've seen efficiency improvements of anywhere from 5x to 30x brought about by the CDP work that we've done. Stitching together all of that data, combining all of the demographic, psychographic response, fast-moving data, all of that data streamlined and made available for marketers in a simple-to-use system means that efficiency gains are radical and you use those efficiency gains to worry less about managing data, dump that time that you've saved into building better and smarter customer interactions and the results will come. There are operational benefits beyond just better targeting and efficiency. So improved data health simply has an effect on the business. So the marketing contact universe can increase, duplicate contact records decline, your wasted marketing spend declines, you reduce the risk of any data security and compliance issues, and that's particularly important this year when not only can spam is increasingly getting attention, but GDPR came into reality um, and is something that most businesses have had to react to. And then lastly, you got to get data out of silos. You have to get teams working over silo walls. So simplified data access means simplified integrations. It means that you can turn data into more meaningful information and take those deeper insights and use it to create better cross-sell, upsell, retention, acquisition experiences. And I think um, as you consider what, what move to make next as you dig into CDPs, um, I'll kick things over to Laura because there are some questions to consider uh, as you think through that decision. Yeah, it's something that we always make sure to ask as part of our, you know, sort of discovery questions or even on a demo, because there are a couple signs where um, that are really show that you could potentially benefit from a CDP. And before we even get into, you know, some of the other acronym comparisons, I think a couple ones that we should highlight here is really, you know, where are you collecting your data today? Is it in multiple systems that don't necessarily speak to each other? You know, is it in different disparate data silos? Um, you know, either metrics that you're unable to access or unable to, to even view because of those different systems and because of where the data is being stored? Or is there potentially customer segmentation that you, you know, can't get at yourself or you have to request an IT professional to come in, you know, and two weeks later you have your, your segmentation results? All of those tend to be signs that your data is in a disparate system that, that you potentially can't control and can't take action on. And all of those data points are actual you know, customers and clients and prospects that you could be interacting with in a better, stronger, you know, faster way. To move on to some of the comparisons, now that we've looked at the questions to consider, the first acronym that we want to start going over and start reviewing is the CRM. So the first thing to call out you know, on the right is that, again, we wanted to include a couple other definitions, give us our, our street cred, you don't have to take our word for it. And this one is from um, salesforce.com. A couple of these bullet points that I want to call out specifically are around reconciling multiple profiles. In today's digital age, you know, just thinking of yourself, how many email addresses do you alone have, both professionally and, and, and uh, personally? You know, how many different phone numbers do you have that roll back to you as a contact? And your customers and your prospects are the exact same way. And, and within a CDP, it allows you to have different um, data points, different multiple profiles rolling up to the same contact or the same household, so that you as a marketer or your team are able to, to talk to that person as a, as a person, you know, as a real human being versus an email address or a telephone. Um, it also includes any sort of channel preferences. I know that I have a different preference for social than I do for email than I do for my phone, and being able to have all of those again roll up to me, to Laura, as someone that is actually marketable to. From a CRM perspective, there's a couple things that we want to focus on around the functionality there. One of those being the fact that it was and it is primarily developed to manage and track interactions happening in front of you. So it's you know putting in a, a conversation that a salesperson may have had. It's marking someone as a contact or a lead or an opportunity. And those again all sort of roll up to different profile levels that aren't trackable and aren't actionable. Um, within the CRM. 
you know, going back to the lead thing as well, it's, it's supporting a lead flow. And oftentimes in the CDP space for our clients, we see CRM as a data source not necessarily a, a moment of truth or, or that end all be all trust um, like Paul described earlier. So to close this out, I think the real difference here too is that you know, a CDP contains that customer marketing um, data, data that you're able to actually have a conversation with because it's a contact and a CRM is potentially housing that at a different profile level, at a different level. Um, that really hinders those conversations that you would have as a brand to their to their customer. Yeah, so I'll I'll build on that a little bit as we transition to the next slide. Um, you need CDP systems and you need CRM systems. Mm -hmm. They serve different purposes. Um, as Laura mentioned, CRM systems deal with the transactional information that might be unfolding right now as sales and support and finance teams try to resolve customer issues and treat customers in the moment, CDPs contain historical information, marketing information that's used as you try to manage a customer through their entire life cycle with the brand, um, which sometimes just includes collecting data for analysis and not taking action. Mm -hmm. But we want to move on and compare CDPs to another really popular system that is getting a lot of attention right now, and that is the DMP. So the DMP, as most of you know, it's the system that actually is used to place and, and gobbles up all of your digital ad spending budget <laughs> money. It's where you're trying to target individual customers uh, in the digital world as you buy uh, owned media and try to land ads on properties that attract customers to your brand. Um, so I want to call out some distinct differences between CDPs and DMPs because, again, our very strong opinion is that as much as the industry tries to convince you that this world, these two worlds are collapsing, um, you need both, um, and they're designed to work together. So I'm going to focus on three distinct, distinct differences. So the first one is that CDPs are always marketing owned, and they tend to contain first, second, and third party data, but that data is deeply historical, meaning that you might have years of transactional customer information in the CDP because you might reference it as you build something like a long-term customer value model. Or you might need that history to go build a credible machine learning or artificial intelligence model. A DMP, in contrast, is typically owned by the marketing team, but it's really owned by the ad by digital side of that marketing team. And sometimes that's even the agency. And while it's focused on first, second, and third party data, it's kind of focused on those in reverse order. It's really focused on third and second party data where it's trying to use that data about a transaction in the moment, not what the customer bought four years ago or the summary of their average purchases over the past 72 months. It's trying to take transactional information that's happening on digital properties now, and it's trying to make an intelligent ad buy. And it certainly does leverage first party data, but it's typically inheriting that first party data from the CDP. So the CDP, which is the keeper of the truth, is feeding that information to the DMP to make the DMP smarter about the ad buys that it does make through the people who run it. The second thing uh, that I will emphasize about the difference between CDPs and DMPs um, is that the type of data collected is a little bit different. So CDPs capture data about unique individuals, about addressable unique individuals. It's John Smith that lives at 123 Maple Street in anywhere USA. Um, DMPs capture more transactional again, but, but transactional in a digital sense. It's cookie-based information. It's not necessarily an addressable identity on anything other than a digital network. And that tends to be different data. So it's, it's either non-structured or it's semi-structured in most cases, and the DMPs are designed to store all of that data, where CDPs are really designed to be a much more um, I don't want to say traditional because the database structures have evolved to be quite sophisticated, but it's an addressable record. It is a contact in a database that is identifiable through mostly structured data, but certainly unstructured data as well. The last difference that I'll, I'll point to, and there are several others that you can read on the slide yourself, but the CDPs tend to be the source of the truth and they tend to refresh 
data from all systems. Um, and it tends to be the most up-to-date and complete profile of the customer that exists at a point in time. And it is the system that other systems turn to to go fetch data from. And sometimes the fetching of that data requires something like an ordinary database connection or an API pool to go fetch a complete customer profile. DMPs tend not to play that role. Um, and again, it goes back mostly because of the historical nature of the data living mostly in the CDPs versus the DMPs. There are other differences as well um, that we can highlight in maybe a follow-up series, but at a high level, I think this probably covers it, unless, Laura, there was something you wanted to add. No, I think that that's a perfect summary, Paul, and I think that it, again, goes back to the idea of, of the difference being that, that contact, so that person, that John Smith, that Laura Tentis, and the, the compliment that it gives to the DMP, where it's how do we find more Laura Tentises, how do we find more John Smiths, how do we make sure that those top segments within our DMP can also be used as a, as a, um, you know, just a positive within the DMP. So I know that we've talked about a couple of the main, um, the main acronyms, but obviously there are a lot more out there within this space. Um, but what we want to really highlight, I think, within this, or at least what I would like to, is, is really the idea that the CDP is an enabler to a lot of the other systems that you have potentially within your marketing stack. And Paul mentioned it, and, and I did it as well. So you know, you have a DMP and we really want to push, you know, a lookalike audience out there from our segmentation. The CDP has taken in every single interaction point of your customer and can give you who that best audience as a whole looks like versus just pulling in, this is my best direct mail response group. This is my best email response group. We're now able to pull in data from the CRM to say this is what the best opportunity looks like and let's segment on it. Um, it really just takes in that aggregate data, pulls it up to a contact, but complements sort of that unstructured data as well. Um, and I think that this, this sort of sprocket graphic is a great way to think about those different interaction points between the systems. Yeah, we get asked the question all the time, um, gosh, do I really need another bit of marketing technology on top of my existing stack? I've already got an e-com system, an email service provider, I've got a POS system, I've got a digital asset management system. Um, the reason a CDP is needed is because no one really could have anticipated the volume, variety, and velocity of data that's being created right now at the individual contact level. There are statistics out there, um, pretty well-traveled statistics, that say that every single minute someone is online, they are creating almost a terabyte of information about themselves across all systems, which is an alarming amount of information. Now, you want to funnel as much of that as you can, obviously, to your brand, but you also want to start harnessing that data. And the reason you shouldn't be afraid of CDPs as a new technology in the stack is that they were built to basically take feeds from all of the existing systems and simplify the hardest jobs that those systems were being asked to do but were not designed to do. Your email service provider was not anticipating loading and storing terabytes of historical data about all customers. Your DMP was not anticipating storing massive amounts of structured historical data about customers and letting 10 other systems have an API connection directly into it. These systems were designed mostly at a different time and for a different purpose, and the CDP unifies all of them and then ultimately simplifies all of the hard jobs of segmentation, real time time decision making and it becomes the feeder to all of these other systems and the efficiencies alone almost always produce a return on investment and then when you overlay the improvements in response and performance of the marketing programs themselves with the efficiencies that you're going to get it is 100 percent a payback event that you would benefit from as a CDP owner. So as I kick things back over to Laura um, Part and parcel to owning a CDP um, is some improvement to your data. So you should not think of a CDP as, as a dumping ground for all of the data in the enterprise with no organization and no improvement. In fact, the opposite is true. It's an optimization of all of the data from all of the sources in your organization. But then CDPs have data improvement built in, and it comes in a number of flavors. 
Yeah, that's a great point. It's, it's not a data lake, but it does have all of the data. So once we have sort of this whole visual, you know, the whole view of all of those different systems coming in, you have to think, why don't we use now all of that existing data to make everything smarter and to make your marketing smarter? So that includes data enrichment opportunities based off of the data that you already have. So for example, if you have a, you know, a purchase history from a store, we have a geolocation. If we have an address for a contact, we're then able to include those sort of visuals within emails. Um, yep, and if you have things like product SKUs, and the product SKUs actually mean certain things about color, size, and category, the CDP should automatically be transforming what used to be opaque columns of data like product SKUs into three new bits of data that are color, size, and category and making that available to marketers. Exactly. And additionally, I think the other piece too is when you think back on making data, your own data smarter and building on the existing piece, it also includes data pens. So if you're getting a birth date, are we able to change that into an age, which you would then use to market to someone who is under 25 differently than someone who is over 50. It also includes um, any sort of other items like wedding date. For one of our clients, we were able to you know, put in a wedding date and calculate that down, which really just automated and made such an efficient uh, campaign based off of what can be, you know, a two-year process. Um, and again, it's all based on the data that you already own and complementing that data because it's coming in from all of those different touch points uh, and places that you're interacting with your, with your customer and your prospect. Yeah, and then one of the most powerful ways that you can add and improve data to your existing environment is through machine learning. So at Quick Pivot, our artificial intelligence and machine learning platform is called Ada. And with Ada, you're basically sitting on all of the customer data that gets fed into a real machine learning environment. And there are a number of models that are built out of the box in the Quick Pivot CDP, but they do classic things like predicting which products are going to be purchased together, which customers are likely to churn, which customers might stay but they might retire a certain product, mm -hmm. what are the best cross-sell and upsell opportunities, which customers are most at risk. And the beauty about machine learning is that it can turn single data points into multiple data attributes that can then feed a true machine learning model. And machine learning is a little bit of a misunderstood science, and I think it's something we're going to cover in a subsequent piece. Um, but the beauty about machine learning is that it's not static. The machine gets smarter as the CDP feeds it more and more and more data, and it challenges itself to produce the best and most accurate predicted result of whatever question you're asking of the data. So there's no limit to the types of enrichment append and AI that can be added to your existing data. So that closes out our uh, conversation, I think, today. Um, we've hopefully you know, given you a lot to think about in regards to acronym overload, but also really in regards to CDP and the value that, that companies and our clients see um, by using a CDP within their marketing stack and letting it sort of be the glue that, that allows all of the other different systems to, to speak to each other. Um, you know, Paul, any last words before we close out? No, uh, just an open invitation. Um, if you ever have any questions about CDPs and just want to talk shop, um, and again, with sort of a no strings attached offer, um, Laura is a great resource. She's worked hands on with data in the CDP space. Uh, we're sitting not too far away from each other. So if she has questions about product or product direction, um, she's always got me to lean on and we're happy to help where we can. Thanks so much, everyone.